Right. Go. Hello, welcome to the Cat and Dog Show. Today we will be discussing the wonders, wonderful wonders of the moon. Now you may think the moon is just a big, boring hunk of useless rock. Which it is, but... Hold on a second, Cat. The moon is actually a very important, big, boring, useless hunk of rock. It affects the world we live in and us in many fascinating ways. Fascinating my... Uh, moving on. NASA is planning eventually on sending a group of astronauts to the moon again sometime soon. They plan on doing this eventually sometime in the future. Isn't that interesting, Cat? Nah. Hey, dog, why does the moon glow at night? Is there like a giant light bulb inside of it or no, something? Oh, no, my very unintelligent feline friend. The reason it glows is because the sun is illuminating its light on the moon, which lights up sort of like when you shine a flashlight in a mirror. When the moon is lit up, it gives a small amount of light on the dark side of our planet, the side not facing the sun. Dog, why are you so smart, may I ask? Well, Cat, it's, been, it's because we came on smarter than you. It's been scientifically proven, too. Why do you ask? Because you seem to have an oversized ego. <sighs> Anyways, back to astronauts landing on the moon. Now, you may think it's just a simple task to get up to the moon, like a trip to the moon would be easy. But the part should fly upwards, and then you just have to get to the moon and land. Yup, that's basically how it works. No, it isn't. I was being sarcastic, you... You cat. It's actually very dangerous landing on the moon. Surf is one of the most dangerous parts of it. Is it made of Swiss cheese? No. Cheddar cheese. Ooh, that's even better. Again with the sarcasm. Yeah. Cat, but no seriousness. The moon is made up of lava stuff from minerals that are lacking in water. So the moon is made of things like silicon oxide, titanium oxide, lots of oxygen, but no hydrogen by any chance? Why, yes, you're correct, Cat. How did you know? And here I thought you were an idiotic dummy. Oh, I am a dummy dog. I'm just reading off of this script you gave me. <sighs> well, back to what we were talking about. The moon is composed of two regions, the dark side and the light side. Oh. Hey, dog. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hey, dog, why was that the beach this morning? I saw some radical waves. Why was that? Does the moon have something to do with it by any chance? Well, it's very interesting. Why? If the moon is straight overhead while you're at the beach, it is able to exert an extra pull. Whatever is directly beneath it, which is the ocean, any anything below the moon will get an extra pull towards the moon, which is how we get high and low tides. The, su the side of the moon is directly above gets high tides, and the side to us left experience low tides. But why were you at the beach? I thought cats supposed to hate water. Oh, because I wanted to see the fishies. <sighs> the moon is composed of two regions. The dark side and the light side? Sorta. Of. There's a lunar mar and the terrian. The lunar mar is either made up of lava from volcanoes or the surface liquefying due to an impact from a meteorite or any kinds of space debris. Then there's terrian, which is made up of mostly rocky highlands and other stuff. Oh, anyways, um, what are the moon like? Because I think that the moon, are, the moon and the Earth are alike because one is like a big hunk of useless, lifeless rock, and the other has a lot of stuff on it. Uh, meh, sort of right. The moon is said to have been part of the Earth long ago, around 4.52 billion years ago. Supposedly, while our planet was still forming, a planet called Theia collided with Earth. And the cores of both planets were combined and blown into outward into space, mm -hmm. which together formed the moon. If you decided to cut the moon in half, you'd see the surface, you'd see the center of it is off to one side a little further. This means the moon rotates around the Earth. The side with more density is being constantly yanked on the Earth. The heat wibbly wobbly. Anyways, the moon, as you know, changes shape. Not like a transformer? No. The moon has the light is illuminated on it. The moon is lit up, but sometimes not all of it. And so that's how we get the different moon phases. These phases might be different every time we see the moon. Some days it might be a full moon, crescent moon, half moon, or new moon. There are several kinds of phases. How long would it take me to get to the moon, dog? I might want to visit if I ever can. Well, it's a long way away. The moon might seem very close to us, but if you consider the amount of space you have to travel, the distance from Earth to the moon is 238,900 miles, or 384,400 miles, kilometers. Time it would take around three days, three hours, and 49 minutes. I'll remember that, and to pack enough catnip to occupy me on the trip. Oh, okay. See you later, outside. 
You know what? Probably not, so I'll just explain it so you don't have to ask. While the Earth rotates on its axis, one side, <laughs> one side of the facing the sun, and the other side facing the depths of space. The side facing the sun is experiencing daytime, and the side not facing the sun is experiencing nighttime. Yeah, I wanted to ask, anyways. The show's almost over, and I've got to go home and eat. One last thing, dog. Is there a relationship between the Earth and the sun and the moon? Yes, you see, the moon orbits around the Earth and gives us low moonlight during nighttime. And the Earth orbits around the sun, and the sun lights up our Earth and moon, giving us light and warmth during the day. Interesting! Anyways, thanks for joining us on this episode of the Cat and Dog Science Show. Next week, we'll be learning about what happens when we expose dog to outer space, but without a spacesuit. Wait, what? Yay!